New South Wales has a long and proud history of timber bridge design and construction. In the second half of the 19th century, the extension of the New South Wales rail system to the outlying areas of the colony was a high priority. As a result, the construction of expensive rail bridges in either iron or stone consumed a large portion of public works funds. As a cost-saving measure, the colonial government passed an edict that for road bridges, local hardwoods were to be used as much as possible. Short spans of up to around 13 metres could be accommodated with a simple timber girder structure. However, for the longer spans needed to provide clear access over the many wide rivers in New South Wales, more elaborate truss designs were required. Early truss designs were based on British and European designs with some American design influences. The designs of these trusses were continually improved over many years by local engineers John MacDonald, William Bennett, Percy Allen, Ernest de Berg and Harvey Dare. These improvements resulted in bridges which were longer lasting and easier to repair. Using the plentiful and very strong and durable local hardwoods, truss span lengths of up to 50 metres were achieved. Over 400 timber truss bridges were built. So prominent were they that New South Wales became known as the Timber Truss Bridge State. These pioneer timber bridges allowed goods and people to travel safely and quickly, vastly aiding the development of communities and regions throughout New South Wales. Compared to a concrete bridge, the timber bridges have got some soil about them, uh, elkhorns grow in them, tree ferns grow in them. Uh, concrete bridges don't, don't, when you drive over them, you don't, they don't go plankety, plank, plankety, plank, plank. You, you wouldn't know you're going over a, a, a river or a creek sometimes. They make you more aware that you're travelling. They're a part of the enjoyment of travelling. They're a beautiful thing to look at underneath. They are more easily repairable than a concrete bridge. They don't take up much timber from the forest and they require the very best of timbers. Historically there's been a few experts on trust design that have been followed over the years. They learnt their trade from the Americans in bridge building. When this one was built in 1877, it was the first one by the Public Works, a bit experimental, designed not to be repaired. This one was supposed to see its day and then it built a new one. The ongoing maintenance of timber bridges is expensive, time consuming and labour intensive. A high level of technical skill and teamwork is required and the sourcing and supply of high grade hardwood is difficult. Many of these charming old timber bridges remain in full service today. A testament to the integrity of their original design and construction. They are appreciated by both travellers and local communities alike, and some are listed on the State Heritage Register. This film gives a brief glimpse of a variety of typical works carried out by bridge maintenance crews to maintain these magnificent historic structures. The 1893 McCain's Bridge over Cox's River near Lithgow required extensive rehabilitation. This major work involved installation of temporary Bailey Bridge trusses to allow replacement of timber truss members and cross girders. This is McCain's Bridge, which is the last surviving McDonald truss in the western region of the RTA. It's over a hundred years old and uh, we're committed to restoring this because it's a real heritage item. It's uh, one of the earliest bridges designed by the RTA and consequently uh, has uh, quite a history. Uh, first of all in the 1980s there was a major flood which washed the centre pier out and so you see a, uh, a rebuilt pier in concrete. But the timber, we're trying to replace that to the same standard as it was before. Perhaps of uh, greatest interest will be the lower cord of the truss which is a laminated uh, timber and of course timber is hard to get these days. We've got to take this timber from uh, Coffs Harbour. It's not available in the same lengths as it was. Being laminated it's important that we uh, 
stagger, the jointing. About a year ago, a very heavy load went over this bridge and uh, that actually did a lot of damage and distorted the trusses as well as warped them. And uh, we've had to come in and do a lot of work. But before we can take the weight uh, off the members that we are uh, replacing, we relieve them by using Bailey trusses uh, to take the weight and allow traffic to still have access to the areas that they want to go to. We're looking here at a, a principle that's come out of the bridge. That's the sloping uh, main top member of the truss. And one can see how absolutely shot and deteriorated the timber is here so that it had no way of uh, taking the full stress being asked of it. Before we carry up these works, there's a program of test boring where the men go through with their augers and they uh, uh, drill through at strategic points in the timber to determine just how much rot there is. This is a, uh, as much of an art as it is a science to be able to have the feel in your drill to determine and to sense the different uh, densities in your timber. The, uh, the timbers that are here now are well past their use-by date. Well, it's been affected, that particular piece, by water that's uh, flowed down the hill here, got into the abutment. The water hasn't drained away, it's softened the timber and caused that timber just to lose its inherent strength. About 400 mil away from here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll cut it. Cut the nuts off up here. Crane might be strong enough, lifted enough, cut the twelve. Uh, one of the problems of uh, setting, old, of fixing these old bridges is there's no, um, there's no publication on them, like how to set them. It's only on experience, most of our bridges are. Because it's, I don't know, there's not many people left who can do, do uh, trust bridges, I suppose, or timber bridges. The lead hand, Steve, he's worked on bridges for about 10 years. Um, Doug, the old English fella, he's worked on bridges for his whole life, I think. He worked on the Shire, and then he'd come across the RTA. And the rest of us had just come up as apprentices. It's all basically uh, multi-skilled. But, uh, yeah, we've got, a fair, we've got a fair bit of experience. Our, um, our foreman, Larry Walker, he, uh, his father was, in the, uh, was a bridge carpenter, and Larry's been in there for many a year. He's, uh, he's actually, actually been in there since he was 16. I don't know how old he is now, but I dare say he's been in there for about 20, 25 years. The, the, the top caught up. Yeah. Uh, I'm both it, get it to the right size, put the principles in, and then make bigger blocks. And that, that's just right. How long until you could take the weight off the bar there? If I don't have the hassles that I had with this truss, I'd say probably get it up in three weeks. From an environmental point of view around our jobs, the storage of our fuels are in uh, containers like this. They're self-funding so that if there's a spill, the oil just goes straight through the floor and is caught at the bottom of the container.
You let the weight back off. Yeah, rough medium anyway going to the centre. It hasn't moved any. I don't think uh, I don't think it's a problem. The design feature of McDonald Truss Bridges is the use of multiple timbers bolted together to form the bottom core. Once we get the bottom cords all done, we'll do the principles, start to put the principles back in and then put the camber back into it and then we'll work on um, replacing the girders, all these lovely rotten girders that are in here. Join there, the second one, got to go up. Yeah, that's on the last one Well, you can't put that go over there a bit more, can you? And then put a bloody chip on it to get more pressure on it. Yeah. This one here has to be lifted up. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you put a yoke across it, you put that on top of it. Get the old you put pressure on the one spot. The, yeah. Then what about happens to these ones here? No, they'll stop there. They'll stop there, Rick. Yeah. So can you leave the wedge over in place? Okay, then. Yeah, but I've yeah, only got to lift it. Oh, just one. It's only got to be about three, three mil. mil. I've been in there, though. Right near your foot. Bit of wedge in there. The selection and processing of hardwood is a very specialised expertise. New South Wales State Forests manages timber resources in New South Wales. Here we have a grey iron bark. Uh, this type of tree is, you'd probably cut a girder 14 by 14 or 12 by 14, up to 9 to 10 metres long. It's quite big enough to cut truss timber out of it. Uh, probably 12 by 4s up to that length. This is probably the best timber for, as far as strength goes for bridge timber. It's the durability class 1 timber and it should give you the highest strength of the lot. This is a grey gum girder. It's quite a good specimen for a grey gum. It would actually cut probably 12 metre 12 by 12 or you could be use it as a pile, a round girder. Probably the base of it you'd cut smaller length cords out of it. It probably tend to be fairly solid, it's got a good clean head on it and should be quite good for a, an RTA specified timber. Same as a grey iron bark, it's durability class 1, strength group 1, so it's got the same properties and same strength groups as iron bark and be in the same category. Some bridge elements such as piles and girders can be used in their natural round state. Trust members however must be sawn from very large logs since they are required to be free of heart timber. Only the very best of hardwood can be used gun. for timber truss members. Not a bad sapling for since that, that many years old, is he? 34. Yeah, there's potatoes going there in 1934. Yeah. 
34, what's that? 45, 60, 60, 60, 67. 66 years, 67 years. These timbers are getting harder to get from the forest as far as sustainable logging is going. They tend to cut these timbers into logs and if there's no people interested in their orders, this type of log would go to the sawmill and be cut up into sawn timber where it should be put aside somewhere and used for an order which comes along from the RTA. Better to have a right size log to cut a box start curder out of. Actually better cutting down there the just the square. Like that gives you a better more stronger wood in the outside area than it, than in the heart. If you cut it out of a big log, a log that's too big, you get too much brittle wood in the centre here, which doesn't give you as much strength. Especially being at the head size, once you get to the butt size, you got more or less all carroty wood. To cut truss timber, the, the further away you cut it away from the heart, the stronger the timber will be. This is a perfect example of log that you need for cutting truss timber out of. It's got a lot of size and it's got good clean wood, it's the right durability. A log being that size, there wouldn't be a great deal of pull in it. There's not much sap on it, it has a very thin sap band on it. It's very difficult to get logs to cut big section uh, truss stuff, truss timbers. We're going to cut it. 10 by 10 out of this log. There's an old broad axe that used to cut girders. Tape at 250 by 250. Mark for the chalk line. I just flick the line to leave a mark. Portable drop saws were once a popular tool for producing girders. However, they are very dangerous and are rarely used today. Ten mil over. Have to talk to the timber inspector about that. Hey. Right on. Right on it, it is. The historic Munkerai Bridge near Stroud in the Upper Hunter Valley is one of the oldest timber truss bridges in the state and is one of only two remaining old public works department style trusses. In mid-2000, the bridge was damaged by a truck carrying a heavy load. Tape on that again tomorrow and sight that in and see if we've got a toilet change. If the um, cord is crushed at the top and give away, which has put more, put extra weight on your bottom cords, then your bottom cords are fractured. That's what you've got your big dip in the deck from. So first thing goes is the principal, which is, is, is crushed, and then puts extra pressure on your cords, which has made your cords fracture. Uh, resulting in, like I say, a foot, foot and a half dip in the deck. Yeah, what we'll do tomorrow is put the bale on the bridge, right, which is eight panels long, since the cords are gone at the bottom, we can't put any weight whatsoever on this truss band. So we have to bring cranes in from each side, which can't go past the um, piers, and just finger our baler together eight panels long. So there'll be no weight whatsoever going on the actual span itself. Prior to repairs being undertaken, emergency Bailey Bridge trussing was installed to support the structure and allow it to be reopened to traffic. There. Put a circle around the no, creek. That one there. It is a challenge because um, you're not starting from scratch. You've got to pull something out in the middle and make sure the whole lot didn't, doesn't fall down like a carno set. But like, um, it's a challenge. But 
we get around it, we can do it. I think we do a good job. They run some bolts down this side of the of this beam and there's a a yoke that goes steel yoke goes under and then they take it up onto the the, the Bailey truss with jacks and tighten up bolts on top until it's pulled up straight in the Bailey truss. Thickness of your timber, or, or, or is your long ways? Yeah. How long will I'm look? Three, three holes. Uh, Softwood's soft better. Yeah. That'll yeah. be long enough. Yeah. yeah. All right. You only need about three, probably. The lightweight elements of the Bailey Bridge can be assembled into a substantial load-carrying truss to keep a bridge open to traffic while repairs are undertaken. Actually, yeah, one, huh? Can you bring me in the square? We'll get him. You get that one. You get that one. I'm fairly new at this game. I'm just a regular carpenter, not a bridge and wharf carpenter. And this, as I've discovered, it's a specialised trade with its own language and way of doing things. There's a whole language here. You've got corbels and, and transverses and and piles, and, and there's a calabash, and there's spandex, and spars. All this is new, new language to a, to a carpenter. He's going to get the yoke of the um, rods now. I'm going to put the rods down for him. Me and Johnny put the rods down for him. They're down underneath now, pulling the yokes where they go. So, like, we're free parts here. Basic building principles are the same, but um, you're dealing in, in heavy pieces of timber. You're using a crane and winches and tractors all the time. Huge tools. Everything's large. Because right here, you're pulling the deck, the deck up. You're not pulling the truck bailey down. Yeah, let it off. You can let him back if you like. Yes.
we'll get another black in here in a minute and we'll call him up while he does the nuts. Yeah, we're here. Well, sitting right here. Sitting right here. Seven hundred. Tell me what that is from there to that one. Next one. Oh, to the next one. That's uh, seven hundred as well. Right up. And from that from one from that seven hundred to the next one. Next one is uh, yeah seven forty. Put the curbing along the bailey so that uh, when the people public drive across here, that they they've got a bit of clearance. If they nudge the curb, they're not going to run into the bailey. Oh, we've had a few trucks in the past that have um, hit the curb and gone over and, and and bent the handles on our plates and actually hit the bailey in places too. We've got the um, these ramps we put on here now that'll um, we put on the Z bars and that'll pulls the deck up and we just tighten the nuts up, you know, so we go all the way along and then back. We might have to go five or six times till we get it up. Nah, we'll definitely have it open by um today, yeah. Yeah, yeah. probably four o'clock we'll get around, get all the signs in. Yeah. So I'll be coming off the night for sure. All right. Fair all right. enough. Thanks mate. Good on you. See Thank you. you. Yep. You can tell by looking along the deck now that we've got the sag out and looking along them cords, we've got it um, close, close enough, but we'll just fine tune it now after lunch and that'll be perfect and we'll open the bridge. Well, we've got to repair all them cords. Well, there's five flitches there to repair. We've got to order the timber in. That printer's got to be repaired, but like the big push was to get the bridge back open to public, so that's achieved now. So then we'll just have to go through the steps of ordering the timber, um, programming the work and coming back to do the job. Here, a timber girder in one of the approach bands to the 1904 Steel Truss Luskentire Bridge over the Hunter River is being replaced. Despite the convenience and efficiency of power tools, adzers are still used in modern bridge carpentry. I found it a lot easier by adzing is just holding one hand stationary and just driving it with the other any position you go to and I just move it around while either leaning to the left and then coming back leaning to the right and if you want to take a bit more lean back so it digs in or you lean forward and you're getting nothing <laughs> who's the best on the ads who's the champion me. Not me. Well, well we've got a, a wire rope right? we're going to drill a hole down through the middle of him Put a wire rope down and wedge and socket, and a wire rope up through the deck, and we'll hook it onto the crane. And it'll pull it up through the through the deck and up up to the underside of the deck. I think they imperative. That's important, really. Like it's Australia's history. Like, it's really. How we got here today, really, like you wouldn't be driving across the Hunter River if this bridge wasn't here. So, really, it's an important part for the whole community. Well, back then it was, otherwise, otherwise they wouldn't survive. Like, no, no transport for their goods, and no, there'd be no money for their families. Make it on the other side, just add 110, whatever. Petroleum jelly is used as a barrier to water penetrating the exposed timber. Once we pull that new one up in position, block it up, up to the right height, cut um, 
cut the old one out and then start jacking it across. So, another hour or two. The replacement of the longitudinal timber girders in the many remaining timber girder bridges and approach bands is a necessary yet difficult and demanding procedure. Using a crane and then winches and jacks, the crew manoeuvre the one ton timber girder into a position ready to replace the rotted girder. Well, because of that old girder, it was no good, it had a bow in it, so therefore the deck was bowing down. So we had to lift this end up to get it the right height to, to sit on the corbel. So, we've done this end, now we're going to do the other end. Yeah, right on, boo. Take him out and get it off your bolts. Get that on it. I don't know whether this will go or not. Might be too tight on your bolts on there now. Keep the weight on that. And if right on this, once you bring it across it. Right, you've got to get it up so that'll slip across to where the old girder is sitting. The important yeah. thing is to get it up high enough first before you let the jacks off. Pack it up. Then you jack from this girder across. Well, you can slip the old one straight out. Doesn't leave enough in there. And yeah, normally the outside ones are easy. The inside ones are a bit harder. Because you've got less room to work with. The only thing with the outside ones, you, you've got your fence in the way. That end up there is not real good. Got about that much wood. Oh! A full post? Yeah, well, nearly, nearly a full post. Hang on. Be tired, him ready. Yeah. It's coming over the edge of the corbel here, the side. Uh, inch out there. Oh, where you pack? Now, I reckon they've played an important hole for it. Like, without them, they wouldn't be where we are today. I reckon it is important they maintain them. 
like, even though we've got steel and concrete ones and that going in now, but these are still valuable to what even today's transport. On the Barwon River near Walgett, the approaches to the 1930 Dare Trust Danger Bridge are being repiled. Yeah, the old pier's taken out after it's been tommed up and jacked and the stress of the bridge is taken up and it's uh, filled up with formed concrete on top of the old piles and then you bolt the new ones to the concrete slab. Well, the, the man operating the machine, he knows when it hits solid ground. It's, it, it's very similar to driving a nail through a piece of timber onto a concrete floor, for instance. When the nail gets through and hits the concrete, well, obviously you know what the nail would do. You, you couldn't drive it any further. Well, the end of that cable is wrapped around that first winch, which is run by this diesel machine here, diesel engine. It simply winds the cable up to lift the driving monkey, steel monkey, they call it. And when it gets to a certain height, they let it go, it falls down onto the uh, head of the pile to drive it into the ground. That ring, that stops the timber from splitting when the uh, steel monkey, one half ton monkey, pounds against there. That's simply, that's all that's for. That one, that slides in the groove in the pile frame to hold it in, a, in the correct position. We lift some timber out of here and the pile frame is sat over this hole for that pile to be lifted up and put in the frame to be driven down there onto the abutment. Yeah, I've got to be hooked up before I can climb up, up the pile frame. Right, eh? This is an, uh, an inertia reel ball arrestor. Clamp on there securely. Right, I'll let it go. Right. Now that works the same way as a seat belt in a car, so if it falls, it'll probably fall a couple of metres and it stops from hitting the ground. Come to Walgett a bit. Can he go to Walgett a bit? We'll get a nut on him, do it or what? I can get a nut on him. We'll get a nut on him. Yeah. Yeah. Right, uh, no problem. Right. Uh, catch on the pin up top, we'll be on the desert. 
Opposite way you went. That's him. Whoop. Try that. Go. On. That's him, man. You want him down in the side, mate? Replacement of timber piles on bridges and approaches is a common maintenance activity. The principles of the work have changed little over the years, although contemporary work practices have made it a lot safer. Many of the state's remaining timber bridges have been classified as state significant. This means that their technical excellence and historical contribution to the development of the state has been acknowledged under the Heritage Act. Maintenance work is ongoing to ensure that future generations can appreciate these historical bridges that are a link back to Australia's colonial past. We're going to do all the bridges around here. When we finish this one, we're going to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, I tell you that. <laughs> Understand? Do you know what it's like to be a bridge?